So you have your two revision tests. First is Thornbill, second snapshot. Writing skills would be included in both the tests. You will also be having your practical once again for your speaking listening skills. If you have not submitted your project file, bring it tomorrow and submit it. I had told you way back in November that you're supposed to complete your file and submit it. Topic is NEP, right? Those who have not given, there are people like Ramnik who don't know what is happening in the class, right? So they just come here to chat and talk. Yes, you over there, can you sit straight? Have you opened your book? Which poem are we going to discuss today? The Voice of the Rain, open to it please. Open your book. Do you have the book or not? Bring it tomorrow. So if you can share it with a friend, you can go. You can come sit here with Krish if you want to. Or no, you don't want to? Yes, Harsimran, do you have the book or not? Harsimran, sorry. See, I forgot your names also after the break. <laughs> okay, yes, sir. Please go through the syllabus again and again so you know which chapters to read. Okay, your test is going to be a 40 marks for your final exam and 10 marks for your practicals. So make sure that you have your project ready and uh, you are there prepared for the topic that we are going to ask you to speak upon. Okay, you've done in your term one, similar practical would be conducted again. So now let's carry on with our revision work, all of you. Today we're going to discuss the poem, The Voice of the Rain. We have done it before we are doing it again. Now here in this poem, what does the poet describe? He describes the life or the cycle of the rain, right? So the rain is talking about its own story. And when we have the rain seeking, Harshika is there? Okay, nice. And you have something that is inanimate, coming to life, telling its story. What device is that? Can anybody tell me? What is the device? When inanimate or non-living objects, we give them life, make them behave as humans. Very good. So here, very important device, which is personification. There are two speakers here in this poem. One is the poet and the second is the rain, right? The poet talks to the rain and yes, as we say here, Raghav, please pay attention. So it is, you know, when you are of a very sensitive nature, when you are quite understanding, you are able to realize the significance of things around us. When we start looking beyond the materialistic. So there are so many things which are so important in life and rain is one of them but we never understand its importance or we never realize its significance unless and until it becomes too hot and dry. Yes? Or yeah, when you look at the farmers and they talk about the drought conditions or less rain conditions, then we realize how important it is. But one thing that we do not realize is that rain is one, you can say, gift of nature that keeps the earth alive. We have created so many things. There is one thing that man has yet not been able to make and that is what? Water, isn't it? This is something that we cannot. And yes, so once again, we need to talk about how important this gift is, how important this gift of nature is. We also realize how important it is to conserve it also. We're shortly running out of it. You all are aware. Now let's have a look at the book. All of you look at your book here. Harsimhan, you want to go and sit on the last bench? 
so don't worry the online recording is on if you people know how to misbehave i'm worse than you remember this i I'll, i'll take a name and humiliate you you sitting in the class you better learn to behave you're not here in a circus you second class boy over there sit properly then go on the last bench ramni can you get up and move forward get up as it is you without the book doesn't make any difference whether you listen or not who is is sitting in the class just to talk gurkirat where is your book what what are you doing here in the you stay at home with your book give it company dipanshu you never bothered to attend online classes don't lie to me you all know how honest and sincere you have been right okay and who art thou said i to the soft falling shark which strange to tell gave me an answer as here translated the poet is speaking these lines and as i said he's there you know asking the rain a question because he's quite curious about the rain where does it come from it is such a beautiful gift of nature who art thou who are you i said i i is the poet and to the soft falling shower he's asked this question which strange to tell gave me an answer as here translated it's difficult to believe the rain gave him an answer right you are like of course it's very difficult for mortals to us to believe that the rain is giving an answer and here because we cannot understand what the rain is trying to say the poet has translated so that we can understand it right so why do you think the poet has been able to speak why has he been able to understand the rain because of his sensitive understanding nature right so when you are there very curious about something you try to when you put your philosophical cap on you start thinking about life which you might do many many years from today right now your uh, life is uh, all uh, disturbed isn't it yes so let's bring it back on track let's pray everything goes smoothly that you are here you should stay here isn't it right i am the poem of earth said the voice of the rain so right the rain replied i am the poem of earth who is i over here the rain what is a poem if you have to discuss you've read so many poems what is a poem it's a piece of writing what kind of a writing is it what is there that makes a poem a poem what separates it from prose yes rhyme scheme very good the stanzas are there the rhyme scheme is there lots of literary devices yeah. isn't it right yeah. so all that here and of course we use literary devices in prose also that is not a big uh, differentiating feature biggest thing is the rhyme the rhythm which is there in the poem i am the poem of the earth the rain says the said the voice of the rain compares itself with a poem so here what is the device one is personification rain has compared itself it is a metaphor simile is with the use of as and like i fall as the poem of the earth right i am as rhythmic as the poem of the earth no it's not compared is implying i am a poem i am the poem metaphor okay so note down all these things here eternal i rise and ironically this poem does not have any rhyme scheme isn't it 
the poet is talking about the poem of the earth but this poem is not at all rhyming and rhythmic like the rain falling eternal i rise her simmer stand up please go at the back of the class behind the benches there's no bench for you please go there go go that side go that side please that side change your row change the row also go there last the other row next row no no tum se to sari baatein karte na you are the most uh, what uh, interesting person eternal i rise impalpable out of the land and the bottomless sea eternal means eternal forever right so like yes the gifts of nature they are eternal they never end eternal i rise forever i will keep on rising where does the rain come from impalpable you can't uh, see me or touch me and like okay i don't have any form out of the land the land where there is water rises out from there and the bottomless sea bottomless so yeah when you see you talk about the sea that there is it's going to uh, hit the bottom right the ending but this it comes out from a bottomless sea even the sea is not going to dry up there is no ending of that sea you can't reach the bottom of that sea right that means as long as that sea is there so the rain is also going to rise from there eternal means what does eternal mean yes forever always bottomless endless so where does the rain rise from the land and the sea will this process continue or will it end it will continue forever okay right upward to heaven now from the land where does the rain go where does it go towards the sky towards the heavens now we know of this as a simple process you talk about the water cycle you've done it in your sciences right and you made a diagram also of the water cycle if you remember okay now here it is you know we're talking about heaven we're talking about bottomless sea we're talking about formless vaguely formed and then taking a shape here because the poet understands the importance of rain it is not a scientific phenomena for him it is something which is very very important for the earth to stay what the earth to stay alive right so if we think of this if we think nature as important to give us life to carry on with this life that we are blessed with only then we are realize its significance right so we have to be sensitive we have to appreciate the gifts of nature clear gurkirat dipanshu okay khushi upward to heaven whence vaguely formed all together changed and yet the same purav is finding it very funny can you share the joke no I, i'll make you remember nicely don't worry upward to heaven whence vaguely formed all together changed and yet the same where has the rain come from where does it come from from the land and the sea then it goes to the heavens what happens to its form over there it changes yes is it a definite form does it take a fixed form a predecided form no it changes into what what do the vapors change into 
the clouds, right? And the clouds, as we know, they do not have any definite shape, right? Vague, vague is not clear. Altogether changed and yet the same. From the surface, water, it has changed into vapor. Then it has changed into these clouds. So it's, you know, like what the shape might have changed, but its identity is still the same. At the heart, it remains the same. Okay. So there's nothing that has changed about it. Then I descend to lave the draughts, atomies, dust layers of the globe. Descend means fall down. What falls down? In which, which form will it be now? Water form we call precipitation. You know, in various forms it comes. And once again, where will it come back to? The land and the sea, right? And when it falls, as it falls through the layers of the atmosphere, what does it do? It brings down all the dust and the dirt which has collected, not only in the atmosphere, but on the earth itself. Isn't it on the land itself? Washes away the trees, washes away everything. And everything looks so bright and clear, isn't it? Right? I descend to lave the draughts. What is drought? Yes, lack of water. Drought here. There's a shortage. And when the rain falls, what happens to the drought? It's over. Yes? There was scarcity of water. There was scarcity of rain. When the rain falls, that drought is over. I lave, I descend to lave the draughts. Atomies. What are atoms? Tiniest particles, yes. Dust layers of the globe. So around the globe, it seems these dust layers are there. And so the rain comes and washes them. So see how important it is. We think that, yeah, it's just falling here, but how far it comes from and it blesses us with this beautiful gift. Isn't it right? So nature is there, such a wonderful, uh, you can uh, say, uh, what giving us these so many heavenly gifts and rain is one of them and all that in them without me were seeds only latent unborn atomies are there droughts are there even the seeds also they need water to germinate they need water to grow so if the rain does not fall what will happen drought would be there what will happen to the plants what will happen to the crops Will there be a good harvest? No. So rain is very important. And it says that in them without me were seeds only. The seeds would remain seeds only. The seeds will not germinate, right? Latent, unborn. What is latent? Hidden. What is unborn? The plant, the sapling, right? So if rain did not fall, new life would not happen. So the rain is so important, okay, right? And yes, so here the poet is making us realize again and again that is the rain justified in calling itself poem of the earth? It is. It gives so much back to the earth. It doesn't take away anything, but it gives the earth so much, so much beauty, so much life, right? And forever by day and night, I give back life to my own rhythm. Who has created life on this earth? Okay, God created life. But then who perpetuated that life? Who made that life continue? Again, God? Okay. As we said that the first life it originated in water. Yes, right? That is why the rain is saying, and if the rain is not there, what is going to happen to all the rain, uh, life forms which are here? How many will survive? How long can we survive without water? Don't drink water, what will happen? 
of course we feel thirsty can we survive we need water right yes plants need animals need we need it isn't it right so it is very very true by day and night there is a fixed time of the rain falling it can fall in the day it can fall in the night and as the rain falls what does it do it gives back life to its own origin who created the rain created who is carrying it forward the rain is carrying it forward right who is making that life continue the rain is making that life continue and make pure and beautified and along with you know continuing with that life it makes it pure it makes it beautiful and you have read there yes asyes please stand up stand up please how does the rain make the earth pure and beautiful can you pick up that line from the poem tell me the line from the poem where do you know how to read english <coughs> are you forgotten read it how how does it make it pure how do, that is what i'm saying where is it line which tells us jaldi padho nahi to aditya is ready to give the answer aditya come on stand up and speak aditya has the answer he is not telling you bad friend krish tell me the line yes aditya suyash please listen krish repeat the line absolutely correct so how does it pure and beautify it by washing away the dusts and the atomies right and the dust layers of the globe for song issuing <coughs> from its birth place after fulfillment wandering wrecked or unwrecked duly with love returns these last two lines are not the words of the rain right first two lines also not by the rain last two lines are also as an afterthought the poet is making this comparison what is the comparison here tishnoor you don't have the book it's better you listen for song issuing from its birthplace so rain has been compared with what has rain been compared with a song or music what is the similarity so what has happened to the rain as it reaches the earth goes towards the sky and heavens and comes back what has happened to its form Thank <laughs> you. 